Good morning. I know it's hot, so I promise I'm not going to keep you, I'm going I'm to make this uh, five minutes or shorter, but last week I, I sat on that front pew and I twitched and I moved around and I thought, I just, I need to say something. I, I need to, um, I need to get up and I need to address some things, And uh, but it's, it, it's Nick's time to preach and we really tried to respect each other during that time, but today I just felt like I, I needed to get up and just say just a quick word. With all that's going on in the world today, I don't believe this is a time for us to, um, to just not say anything. I do believe that it is a time for, for us as a church to, to really look at some things and, and, and to say something. But I want to remind you of one scripture before I do this. I think it's Jeremiah 29. You, all of you use Google, I'm sure, or DuckDuckGo, or whatever it is that you use. But... Um, so you can find it, but I think it's Jeremiah 29, but whenever God was allowing the Babylonians to come in and take the Israelites captive, he was, um, he was allowing them to go into captivity for 70 years. And during that time, God told them, here's what I want you to do. He said, pray for the welfare and the peace of the place that I am sending you because it is in the welfare and the peace of that place that you will find peace in your own lives. And so here's one of the things that I want to remind us first of as a church. This is not our home. You understand that, right? This is not our eternal dwelling, first and foremost. But that does not mean that while we are here, we are not to pray for the peace of this place, to pray for the welfare of this place. So our first response to all the unrest that is going on is first and foremost, prayer. It's not being a keyboard warrior on Facebook. Y'all with me? Our first response to this is on our knees in prayer, praying for the peace of this place. I want to remind you of something. Whether you're talking about police brutality, whether you're talking about racism, whether you're talking about adultery, homosexuality, alcoholism, drug addiction, you name a sin. I don't care which one you're talking about. The issue with this world is that we have sinful hearts that do not want God, but instead we want what we want. We want power. You want to know why there are some police out there that do, uh, that, that do use excessive force? It's not always racism, although sometimes there's a little bit of racism in probably most everybody's heart. Let's be honest here. right? Can we be honest this morning? And so I want to remind you, the root of the issue is the human heart. And so what does that mean? That means that the only hope that you have as a church, the only hope that you have as a Christian or an individual is the gospel. Because the only thing that will fix a racist heart is the gospel. The only thing that will fix an adulterous heart is the gospel. The only thing that will fix police brutality is the gospel. There is always going to be sin, whether you have racism, police brutality. I don't care what it is. You will not eliminate it from this world. The only thing that is going to change it is the gospel. So why am I telling you this this morning? Because there is no greater opportunity for us as the church right now than, than right now during the unrest that's going on in this world to preach the gospel. People, the world need to understand that our hearts are evil. Whether you're talking about a white policeman, a black policeman, whether you're talking about a white racist, a black racist, a Mexican racist, I don't care. Your heart outside of the gospel is a sinful evil. The Bible literally says it is, it is evil and wicked above all things. Who can know it? We look at a video where a man puts his knee on another man's neck while he cries for help for eight minutes and we think, how in the world can he do it? Can I give you a little tip or a little secret you may not know? You can do it. It's in you. 
sin is in you. You look at a racist, you say, how can they do this? It's in you. We are sinners. And our only hope is the gospel, guys. Right now, we need the world to know that this is why we need Jesus. This is why we need the gospel. Now is not a time for Christians to start throwing darts at each other saying, how can you and how can you and how can you? No, this is a time where you need to be people that go, I know why things like this happen. My eyes have been open to the sin that is in this world. And so here's our response, Wells Baptist Church. We pray for the peace of this land. God, please bring peace to this unrest. But the only way that peace will ever come is through the gospel. The only way that a heart will ever be changed is through the gospel. And don't you ever forget that your heart outside of the gospel is just like the hearts that you're looking at out there today going, I can't believe, I can't believe. Yes, you can. Because your heart's the same way. And you're the same kind of sinner. And your only hope is the same hope that this world has. And that's the gospel. So I'm going to end my sermon this morning. But I need to respond to you this morning, church, and I need to remind you that your response right now is prayer and the gospel. And those two things can change everything about this world that you live in. Let me say a word of prayer and I'm going to hand it back over to our worship team. Y'all pray with me. Father, right now we want to come to you and we want to ask you that you would bring peace to our unrest. Father, I pray for families of victims of, of racism. Father, I pray for families of victims of police brutality or any brutality for that matter. Father, I pray for victims of sin. Lord, there are so many different sins in this world that affect so many people in many different ways and it brings suffering throughout every life. And so, Father, I pray today for the peace of this land. Father, I just ask you, God, that, Lord, you would change hearts. Lord, I pray for our police force here in Pulaski and Giles County. And, Father, I just pray that, Lord, that you have changed their hearts. Father, I pray that they are Christian people. I pray, God, that they are led every day in their steps by the love of Christ, by the gospel. And, Father, I pray that that bleeds over into everything that they do, especially their jobs. Father, I pray for our racist hearts. Father, I pray for our hearts that, Lord, that judge people for, for all kinds of reasons, not just skin color. And Father, I pray, God, that you would help us, that you would help us to see people the way that you see them. Father, open our eyes so that, so that we can love people the way that you love them. And Father, I pray today, God, for eyes to be open to the gospel. Father, I pray that we can all recognize how sinful we are in our hearts. And Father, I pray that it would humble us. And Father, I pray that You would lead us to be witnesses for You that would proclaim the gospel to the world that our only hope was You. That our only hope was that You changed our hearts. God, I remember who I was. I remember the sinner that I was and, and that I still am to some degree, but Father, You've changed me. I thank You that I'm not who I used to be. I'm not there yet, but I'm not who I used to be. And Father, I just pray that You would keep opening my eyes with the Gospel. I pray that every day You would make me more like Christ. And Father, I know that that's our only answer. And so Father, I'm asking You this morning that You open our eyes. Lord, help us to be the light in the midst of this darkness. And God, it ain't going to be by pointing fingers at everybody. It's going to be by praying to You and asking You to open eyes and to change hearts and letting us give the testimony to the, what the gospel has done in our lives. So Father, give us a witness right now. And Lord, I pray that you would help us to speak to all of the people around us in this unrest, and that we could shine the light of Christ on everyone's life that needs it right now. Father, thank you for this church. Thank you for these people. And God, I pray that today we will leave here different, and looking at this world and this unrest differently, 
because of what you have opened our eyes to today. Father, pray, we pray for the peace of this land so that we might have peace as we live in it. But Father, this world is not our home. Lord, we're just passing through. And Father, I thank you for the home that we're going to, Father. Lord, we would not be there at all if it were not for what you've done for us. We do not deserve it in the least. Father, we owe it all to you. Father, I pray for our worship team today. I pray for Brother Nick today. Father, I pray that your word would be spoken. And Father, I pray that whether we like it or not, Father, I pray our sinful hearts would be pierced. And I pray that we would be changed forever because of what you open our eyes to. Father, we love you. Forgive us where we fail you. But thank you for mercy. Thank you for grace. I pray for these things in Jesus' name. Amen.